Hello everyone and welcome to the session Summary of Arithmetic Instructions. Till the previous session, we have studied all the different instruction types of the arithmetic group of instructions. Today, we are going to have a summary of that. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topics that we are going to cover in this session, as announced earlier, today we are going to summarize all the different arithmetic group of instructions. Now, if you remember, when we started learning about the arithmetic instructions, I told you, in the arithmetic group of instructions, there are 14 different types, and in all these types, we have got 62 opcodes. Today, we are going to see all of the instruction types at once, and in that process, we will also count the total number of opcodes that we have learned in this specific group. Now, if you remember, when we started learning about the arithmetic group of instructions, we started off with ADDR. Now, the instruction type ADDR, here, it means add contents of R to accumulator. So, basically, when we are performing the addition of two 8-bit operands, in case of 8085, it's a rule that one of the operands must reside inside the accumulator register. And after the addition has been performed, the result of the addition will also be stored in the accumulator. Now coming to the second operand, it will be stored inside the register or the memory location which will be specified by this capital R. So for the instruction type add R, there are 8 different instructions. I hope you remember why we are writing capital R in here instead of small r. And the reason is, Along with the GPRs and the accumulator, in 8085, we have also got the opcode for the memory element. When we use the alphabet M in the instruction, it specifies the memory location which will be pointed by the HL register pair. So for this instruction type add R, we have got 8 opcodes. The next instruction type that we learned was ADID8. It performs similar operation to the previous instruction type. The only difference is, here, we are sending the 8-bit data in immediate addressing mode. That is, in the instruction itself, we are providing the data which will be added with the content of the accumulator. So for this instruction type, we have got only a single opcode. Coming to the next instruction type, INRR. Notice, here also we are using capital R, so clearly, we are talking about the accumulator, the six GPRs or general purpose registers that we have, B, C, D, E, H, and L. Also, we will have a variation of INRM, that is, the memory location which will be pointed by the HL register pair. And the purpose of this instruction type is to increment the content by one. So clearly, for this instruction type as well, we are going to have 8 different opcodes. Coming to the fourth type, it was ADCR. Now the instruction type ADCR, here, the mnemonic ADC stands for add with carry the contents of R to accumulator. I hope you remember this as well. When we add multibyte numbers, in that case, the 8085 microprocessor, since it is an 8-bit microprocessor, cannot process the entire data at once. So it will have to do the operation in parts. So for 16 bits addition, it will have to add 8 bits first. And from those 8-bit addition, if the carry is generated on the first place, thereafter when it will deal with the second part, it will have to consider the carry as well. And that's the reason why we need this instruction type, add with carry. As you can notice, 4, 5 was loaded in accumulator, 3, 3, that is the addend, was loaded inside the B register. The carry was set from the previous operation, and we made use of the instruction ADCB. That is, add with carry the contents of B to accumulator. And by the end of this entire operation, specifically this part, the outcome, that is 7-9, will also be stored inside the accumulator. Now notice, we are using capital R in this instruction type. 
So clearly, we are talking about the accumulator, all the different GPRs, as well as the memory location, which will be pointed by the HL register pair. So for the instruction type ADCR, we will have eight opcodes. Coming to the next instruction, ACID8. It performs the same operation like the previous instruction type. The only difference is this time the addend we are sending via the instruction itself. And since it is being sent within the instruction, that's why it falls under the immediate addressing mode. Add with carry immediate to the content of accumulator. So for this type, there will be a single opcode. Now all these five instruction types put into addition, the next type that we learned was SUBR. From this instruction onwards, we learned about all the different types which involves subtraction. And here, we are supposed to subtract the content of R, which can be the accumulator, all the GPRs, as well as the memory location pointed by the HL register pair, from the content of the accumulator. So clearly, for this instruction, we will have eight different opcodes. Coming to the next instruction type, it was SUID8, subtract immediate this data of 8 bits which we are sending via the instruction itself from the contents of the accumulator. For this, we have got only a single opcode. Now the 8th instruction type was DCRR. It performs just the opposite of INRR, that is, it will decrement the content of R and by R, you already know we are talking about the accumulator, the GPRs and the memory location. So clearly, for this instruction type, we are going to have eight different opcodes. Next comes SBBR. Now this is very interesting instruction type that we have learned. And let me remind you what did we learn. The instruction type SBBR stands for subtract with borrow contents of R from accumulator. This instruction type is used when we perform subtraction of multibyte numbers. Here also, just like adding with carry, we are subtracting with borrow. So for the multibyte subtractions, since the microprocessor can't perform subtraction of more than 8 bit at once, therefore, the process will be done in two parts. First, this portion will be handled and if there is a borrow which will also be specified by the carry flag, then the carry flag will be set and this will be considered during the next part. So while operating on the next part with the borrow, we make use of the instruction type SBB. Now since we have the capital R in the instruction, so we are mentioning all the different eight things. And those are the accumulator, all the general purpose registers, and the memory location which can be pointed by the HL register pair. So for the instruction type SBBR, we have eight different opcodes. The next instruction type is SBID8. This operates in the similar way like the previous instruction type. Here, we are supposed to subtract with borrow in immediate addressing mode because we are sending the subtrahend within the instruction itself. So for this type, there is only a single opcode. Coming to the next type, INXRP. If you remember, this instruction increments the extended register. Now by extended register, we mean all the different register pairs. However, while writing down the instructions, we only mention the first register in the pair. And the reason for that is, when we mention B, the later part that is C is considered to be an extension of the B register. And the same goes for DE and HL. And as you can notice, for this instruction type, we have got three different instructions. So clearly, three opcodes. Coming to the next instruction, it was DCXRP. It performs the opposite to the previous instruction. Basically, it will decrement the content of the register pairs by one. So for this instruction type as well, 
we will have three opcodes. Coming to the next type, DADRP. Now, if you remember, DADRP stands for double add register pair with HL register pair. In case of 8085, since using the accumulator, we can only add 8 bit at once. So that is single add. And here, we are talking about adding the contents of any of the register pairs with the HL register pair. And when we are adding the contents of the register pairs, we are adding 16 bits at once. So that's the reason why we call it double add. And notice, in this instruction type, we have got three different instructions. Although the extension is not mentioned in the mnemonic, however, it is implied. So for the instruction type DADRP, we have got three opcodes. Coming to the last type, that is the 14th type, it is DA. And in the previous session only, we have seen how it works. Basically, if we are dealing in BCD numbers, in that case, we need the DA instruction so that after the additions have been performed, thereafter, if the corrections are to be made, we need the DA instruction. If the outcome doesn't need to be altered, the DA instruction will add 00, 0 to it. And if the outcome needs to be altered, based on the situation, the DA instruction will add any of these. Let's take a moment to go through this for a bit. If you observe this example that we have seen in the previous session, here in the outcome, the least significant digit was an invalid BCD number. So the DA instruction added 06 to it. Why 06? Because only the correction is needed at the least significant digit, not the most significant digit. Similarly, in case of example 3, in the outcome of the addition, the most significant digit was an invalid BCD value. Therefore, the DA instruction added 60 to it. Adding 6 to A was making the correction, which we had as 10 because the carry flag was also set. And 5 was being added with 0 because 5 is already a valid BCD number. And I hope you remember what is a valid BCD number. Any value less than or equals to 9 is considered to be a valid BCD number. Finally, in the example 4, if you notice, in the outcome of the addition, both the digits, the least significant as well as the most significant digits, were invalid BCD numbers. And that's the reason why the DA instruction added 66, that is, the correction to both the digits so that we can get the proper outcome in decimal. And all of these are performed by this instruction itself. So for DA, we have got only a single opcode. Now notice, we have covered all the 14 different instruction types. Let's now calculate the number of opcodes. So for the first type, we had 8 opcodes. And for the second type, we had 1 opcode. So 9 opcodes. Now 9 plus 8, 17. Now 17 plus 8, 25. Then 25 plus 1, 26. 26 plus 8, 34. 34 plus 1, 35. Then comes the 8th type, DCRR. So 35 plus 8, 43 opcodes. Then we have 8 more opcodes of the 9th instruction type. So 43 plus 8, that is 51. Then in the 10th type, we have got only a single opcode. So 51 plus 1, that is 52. Then in case of INXRP, we had three opcodes. So 52 plus 3, 55 opcodes. DCXRP, three more opcodes. So 55 plus 3, 58 opcodes so far. Coming to the 13th type, DADRP, three more opcodes. So 58 plus 3, 61 opcodes. And for the last type, we have got only a single opcode. So 61 plus 1. That is 62 opcodes. So is it clear to you now that in the arithmetic group of instructions, we have got 14 different types, all these 14 types we are talking about. And cumulatively in all these types, we have learned about 62 opcodes.
So in this session, we summarized all the arithmetic instructions that we have learned so far. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to solve some problems based on the instructions that we have learned so far, specifically the arithmetic group of instructions. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.